Hi everybody. Today we'll learn about cholecystosis in animals. Just a minute. Nowadays we have to frequently wash our hands or sanitize our hands to kill coronavirus. But do you remember the pre-coronavirus outbreak period where the antidepressant for this sanitizer or hand washing was for killing bacteria? The contamination of the bacteria will cause diarrhea, septicemia, many problems. But do you know that this bacteria as E. coli is facilitating to keep our bone very strong? Yes, the non-pathogenic E. coli in the intestine helps to produce vitamin K2 which is essential for blood coagulation as well as the position of calcium in the bone. How this a common cell, a useful bacteria become pathogenic or very scary or tattered one. We have to check. To know that, I remember what a dialogue in Kings by Mamuti. The dialogue goes like this, right? To know the bacteria, to know the, how the bacteria become pathogenic, you have to know the bacteria, the Ascarcia coli. You have to know how it is colonizing. How you have to know its antigen, antigenicity, pathogenicity, toxicity, as well as attachment and effacement action. Am I overacting? Yes, overacting is another problem by the immunity. Hypersensitivity towards the toxins produced by this bacteria is another problem. And underperformance or immunosuppression also will exacerbate the problems of bacteria. So, first we will have an overview of antigens of the bacteria. These are the antigens of the bacteria E. coli. You can see different types of antigens. And out of this, capsular antigen K, lipoprotein O and flagella antigen H are major one. Other than that one, toxins also forms one of the antigens. And according to this Antigens that are grouped into different types and out of this O157 H7 is highly notorious for causing diarrhea in human beings. Other than the antigens, the E. coli can also be divided into cla or classified into different pathotypes depending upon the pathogenicity how they are causing the lesions. And there are different nearly six types of pathotypes of E. coli are present. And the major four are Endrotoxigenic E. coli (ETEC), Endropathogenic E. coli (EPEC), Endroinvasive E. coli (EIEC), Endrohemorrhagic E. coli (ESEC). So, what is the difference between these four? And from the name itself, you can get an idea about how they differ from each other. Let us see one by one. This endrotoxigenic E. coli. Endrotoxigenic means they are producing toxins endrotoxins there are they produce two types of endrotoxins heat label toxin and heat stable endrotoxin very interesting thing is that in the heat label toxin they have two subunits a and b and this b subunit help in the attachment of the toxin to the epithelium and a subunit that goes actually uh, inhibit the absorption of the water and cause diarrhea it causes watery diarrhea, mostly without any fever, and it affects many species, including human, pig, rabbit. Then the second one, endropathogenic E. coli. Endropathogenic means actually it is not causing, it not producing any toxins, and it causes the lesion by attaching to the intestinal epithelium using a adenosine protein called as intimin they do not produce any toxins and it causes fatty diarrhea without any fever and it affects many species including human the third one is intro invasive e coli invasive this also do not produce toxin instead they invade the back the epithelium of the intestine and cause mechanical destruction. 
this also cause profuse bloody sometimes non bloody diarrhea with fever it mainly affects human and the third one is enterohemorrhagic e coli this also known as stec that is nothing but shiga toxin producing e coli that means they produce a toxin known as shiga toxin and they show moderate invasion they cause profuse bloody or sometimes non bloody diarrhea without fever and other than that one it also could produce another disease known as hemolytic uremic syndrome where we get the animal is having anemia maybe bloody diarrhea then finally kidney will be affected and death will occur this endohemorrhagic e coli affect human uh, cattle crunchy pigs in pigs they cause as disease known as edema disease we will look into it what edema disease is so uh, these are the major one other than this one you can get endro aggressive e coli and uh, adherent invasive e coli they mainly affect human beings uh, this is just about this attaching the facing capacity of this lesions in many cases you may not find much lesion in the intestine uh, because cause only ultra structure changes here you can see the, the left one you can see healthy intestine over you can find bacteria here and you can see the brush border of the intestinal epithelial villi you can see the brush border is very intact here and see here almost all the villi are lost or damaged and what we are seeing here is e coli and some of the e coli have been taken into it but, but you can see almost all the villi uh, brush border has been disappeared and this is the attaching and effacing lesion produced by the e coli another question we are asking is how the bacteria get into other animals this usually occur through the fecal oral route from the feces of adult one especially adult one the bacteria will get into the other animals through the oral route it can also get into the body through umbilicals in case of cows or as an ascending infection urinary tract and cause urinary infection the non enteric bacteria such as that get into the body through the umbilicus can cause polyarthritis in cows which later will cause recumbency torticollis and death regarding the lesions you may not find much lesions grossly in the intestine in all the cases in some cases you may find hemorrhage in the intestine mucosa you may find hemorrhage in extreme cases you may find necrotic enteritis this is an experiment study in marmoset where it was infected with epec and grossly they found hemorrhage in the intestine both serosa on the and in the mucosa and histologically they found addition of the bacteria onto the epithelium and colonizing on the epithelial surface diagnosis of the condition can easily be done using culture especially mcgonagher then we can go for pcr test targeting genes of enterotoxin if it is a case of toxigenic bacteria then now we will learn about the 